Okay, so we started, we looked at addition with these polynomials, with these algebraic numbers. Let's take a look at subtraction again to review. So if we have 5x squared minus 8x plus 7 minus 8x squared plus 9x minus 13. Just like with addition, we're going to write it out and we're going to line everything up with its same name or same place value. So 8x squared goes under the 5x squared. The positive 9x goes under the negative 8x. And the negative 13 goes under the positive 7. And we are subtracting down these columns. So the negatives in here, this can get a little tricky. We have 7 minus a negative 13. It always helps me to rewrite it. 7 minus a negative 13 is going to be changed into 7 plus positive 13, which is a positive 20. Negative 8 minus 9. So negative 8 minus 9 it becomes negative 8 plus a negative 9. So negative 8 and negative 9 go the same direction. That is what? Negative 17. They both go the same direction. They're both negatives. And 5 minus 8. 5 minus 8 would be the same as 5 plus a negative 8. So positive 5 and negative 8 ends up at negative 3. And it stays, it would keep the same name. So it stays x squared. So the negative and positive are supposed to be treated the same like the way that you said that with the two negatives make a positive. And yep. then that, you know, with it with the 7 and 13, what two negatives don't make a positive with the 8 and 9? Well, remember, this is a negative, negative 8, but this is minus a positive 9. The two negatives make a positive when you're subtracting a negative. Okay, this is subtracting a negative becomes plus a positive. Okay. So that's why I mentioned you've got to be very careful that two negatives make a positive because that's only true in the right situation. You can add two negatives and you're still going to get a negative. It's when you either multiply or divide two negatives, or in this case, when you subtract a negative. So multiplying and dividing two negatives is always, always a positive. Okay. Yes. But when you're adding or subtracting, you've got to be careful. The two negatives have to be consecutive. Subtracting a negative becomes plus a positive. So I'm going to have 3x to the third minus 9x plus 7 minus 5x squared plus 2x minus 12. So when I go to set this up, 3x to the third, there is no x squared, so I'm going to put in plus 0x squared just to fill that place, minus 9x plus 7. Now I'm going to go to write the second number. It's a good thing I put in the 0x squared. Because I have 5x squared. That's the line up with it. Plus 2x goes with the negative 9x. And my negative 12 goes under my positive 7. And once again, we are subtracting. So here's the exact same situation for you. 7 minus a negative 12. So that's minus a negative, that becomes plus a positive. So 7 plus 12 is a positive 19. This next one is different. This is negative 9 minus a positive 2. That does not become plus a positive. Negative 9 minus 2 is the same as negative 9 plus a negative 2, which is a negative 11x. How about 0 minus 5? 0 minus 5 would be negative 5x squared. And 3x to the third has nothing to subtract from it, so it stays 3x to the third. Any questions?
That one's a little cruel. I maybe wouldn't do that to you on a test. Maybe. Multiplication. We've done a ton of single digit multiplication. What's this end up being? Do 7 times 4 is 28. X to the third times X to the fifth. X to the eighth. Y to the eighth times Y to the third. Y to the eleven. We've done quite a bit of this. Where we call it distributing, we're just multiplying through the parentheses by a number. So again, we verified there's nothing to do inside the parentheses. Even though there's x's and y's in both numbers, they have different powers, so they are different names. So 7x to the third y times 5x squared y to the fourth. Combining the numbers, 7 times 5, 35. x to the fifth, good, 3 plus 2 is 5. And y to the Fifth. That's y to the 1 plus 4 makes 5. So then 7x to the third y times a negative 2xy squared. 7 times negative 2? Negative 14. x to the fourth. Good. 3 plus 1 makes 4. And y to the 3. 1 plus 2 makes 3. That is it. In your notes, do that one for me quick. So 5x to the 6th, y to the 3rd, times 8x to the 3rd. So the number is going to be 40. 5 times 8 makes 40. x, careful, to 9. x to the 6th times x to the 3rd, 6 plus 3 is 9. And y to the 3rd. Yeah, there's nothing to multiply the y by, so it stays y to the 3rd. 5x to the 6th y to the 3rd times negative 11y squared. The number will be negative 55. x to the 6th y to the 5th. 3 plus 2 is 5. Very good. And we even looked at some like this. Like that. And we looked at something called FOIL, which we'll remind you of. But if you didn't like FOIL, you could always do just long multiplication. Where you did 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 4 times 2x is 8x. Just like regular multiplication of whole numbers. Then you leave a blank spot there or put a zero in, one of the two. 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x, making sure the x's line up. 3x times 2x is a 6x squared. Then combine, you got negative 20. 8 and negative 15 is negative 7x and 6x squared. Or you could have foiled... Um, FOIL is just a shortcut for doing that process. Remember, F stands for first. You multiply the first two numbers. 2x times 3x is 6x. O stands for outside. You multiply the outside digits. 2x times 4 is positive 8x. I stands for inside digits. Negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. Notice I moved over and lined it up with the 8x. And then I do the last digits. Negative 5 and 4 make 
negative 20. And then I'm going to combine. Negative 20 combines with nothing. 8 and negative 15 is negative 7x. And 6x, that should be an x squared. 6x squared. Any questions? I'm going to try one of your notes. So 5x plus 1 times 3x minus 7. Try that one quick. So let's do the FOIL method. So 5x times 3x is... 15x squared, good. Then 5x times the negative 7. Negative 35x. Then 1 times 3x. Positive 3x. And 1 times negative 7. Negative 7. So we combine, we've got the negative 7. Negative 35 and positive 3 is negative 32x. And 15x squared. Just to see how you do. Three x minus five times two x squared minus seven x plus four. Give that one a shot in your notes. See what happens. Let's take a look. So we've got three, we're going to have to adjust. We can't just do simple FOIL. We've got to adjust here. 3x times 2x squared is 6x to the third. Good. 3x times negative 7x. Negative 21x squared. And then 3x times 4. Positive 12x. Negative 5x times 2x squared. <clears throat> Negative 10x squared. Notice I'm putting it under the other x squared. <clears throat> Negative 5 times negative 7x. <clears throat> Negative 5x plus 5. Positive 35x. Again, make, notice I'm lining it up with the other x. But negative 5 times 4. Negative 20. So I've got the negative 20, nothing to combine with that. 12 and positive 12 and positive 35 make a positive 47x. Negative 21, negative 10 make a negative 31x squared. And 6x to the third has nothing to combine with. How many of you got that right? Okay, not bad. Division. We've done quite a few problems like this. Thirty-six x to the eighth, y to the third, z to the fifth, over nine x to the fifth, y to the fourth, z. Where did we start? Well, we started out with the numbers. 36 divided by 9 is, careful, 4. There we go. Then we did each variable separately. x to the 8th divided by x to the 5th is x to the 3rd. 8 minus 5 is 3. y to the, well, we could either put y on bottom or we could just write it as y to the 3 minus 4 is negative 1, or z to the good. 5 minus 1 is 4. Now some of you might be a little wondering why that looks funny, because we quite often wrote it like this. Either way is acceptable. So what I want to look at now is what if it's bigger than a monomial, two single digit numbers, monomials. What if we have a multi-digit number divided by a single-digit number? Like having 
18 x to the fifth plus 24x to the third minus 12x. So we divide that by 6x. What do I get? Well, just like when I divide whole numbers, I'm going to start at the beginning. Let's say I have 486. I'm going to divide it by 2. Okay, 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2. 2 goes into 8 how many times? 4. 2 goes into 6? 3. Now that's obviously a special case because it divided evenly into each digit. There's no remainders. But this is the same type of case. This should divide evenly into each digit. So I'm going to start the 6x going into 18x to the 5th. Well, what's 18 divided by 6? 3. x to the 5th divided by x? x to the 4th. Good. 5 minus 1 is 4. Then we've got this here. 24x to the 3rd divided by 6x. 24 divided by 6? Positive 4. x to the 3rd divided by x? x to the 2nd, or x squared. 3 minus 1 is 2. Then it's negative 12x minus 6x. Negative 12 minus 6, or negative 12 divided by 6? Negative 2. And x divided by x? Cancels out. It's just 3x to the 4th plus 4x squared minus 2. And of course, they can get uglier. They can look like this. Forty-five x to the ninth y to the fifth minus thirty x to the seventh y to the sixth plus forty x to the fifth y to the seventh minus. Did I say plus? Mm -hmm. Sorry, minus forty x to the fifth y to the seventh divided by five x to the fifth y to the fifth. So I'm going to start out with the first digit, 45 x to the ninth y to the fifth divided by 5 x to the fifth y to the fifth. So we need to start with the numbers, 45 divided by 5, 9, x to the 4, 9 minus 5 is 4, y goes away, y to the fifth divided by y to the fifth cancels out. Negative 30 x to the seventh y to the sixth. Divided by 5x to the 5th, y to the 5th. What do we get for the number? Negative 6. Good. Negative 30 divided by 5 is negative 6. x. x squared. Good. 7 minus 5 is 2. y. Just y. 6 minus 5 is 1. So it's y to the 1 or just y. So then we move on to the negative 40x to the 5th, y to the 7th. Divided by 5x to the 5th, y to the 5th. Start with the numbers, we get negative 8. Negative 40 divided by 5 is negative 8. X, nothing. X to the 5th divided by X to the 5th divides out. It's the 1. Y to the 7th divided by Y to the 5th? Y squared, Y2. There it is. There is a process for dividing a polynomial by a larger number instead of just a single digit number like this. I'm not going to make you guys do it, but I'm going to show it to you. Um, so you don't have to write this down in your notes if you don't want to, because you'll never have to do it in your homework or on a test. But if you were going on to a college algebra class, you would have to do it there. So we might have something like, let's go back here. Let's say I have x plus 2. So I might have x to the third plus 4x squared plus oh, let's see, four, 7x plus 6. And what I start out with is just what we did in our other long division. We deal with the leading digits. If I had 
31 going into 9,743. I would look at how many times does 3 go into 9? It goes 3 times, right? Then I check to make sure it works with the next digit. Same here. X goes into X to the third. Well, what's X to the third divided by X? X squared. So I'm going to multiply it back through. Just like whatever I get up here, I'd multiply by the 31. X squared times X is X to the third. X squared times 2 is 2X squared. What do you think I'm going to do next? I'm going to subtract, right? Those two subtract out. At 0, it's gone. 4x squared minus 2x squared is 2x squared. And I'm going to bring down the next digit, 7x. x goes into 2x squared. 2x squared divided by x is 2x. So let's multiply that back through. 2x times x. 2x squared. I better get that same thing so it subtracts out, cancels out, right? 2x times 2, positive 4x. So now I subtract 2x squared minus 2x squared cancels out. 7x minus 4x, 3x. And I bring down my next digit is 6, positive 6. x goes into 3x. 3x divided by x is 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 2 is 6. That subtracts to give us 0. So that is it. x to the third plus 4x squared plus 7x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. So it's x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm not going to make you do that in here. It's a little bit beyond this course, but just showing you what the next step is if you were to go on to a college algebra class. Like I said, those of you in Richmond or Ladysmith, if you did not get your test back, send me an email and I will respond to that email with your test. Um, there are still several people that need to take the test. So if you look at, make sure you look in Blackboard. If you do not have a grade for the test, that means I didn't receive it. So if you took it and there's no grade there, make sure you check with the people on your campus, see where it got to. Otherwise, if you didn't take it, you need to talk to me and get that arranged so you can take it as soon as possible. So there is a new quiz due, not Thursday, but Wednesday, tomorrow, at 11.59 p.m. And new homework due Thursday for class. So you guys have 20 minutes or so. If you want to go next door to the computer lab and work, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we'll see you on Thursday.